How long have you been recording there? <laughs> Uh, what you do here at, at uh, your church, your church's name. I see a Black Lives Matter uh, sign outside. I see Black Lives Matter pins, Black Lives Matter pin right there. Yeah, uh, you give us a little rundown about your church and just you and your involvement in Black Lives Matter and such. I'm Suzelle Lynch, and I'm one of the two ministers here. The mm -hmm. other one is Joyce Palmer. And um, this is a Unitarian Universalist Church West mm -hmm. and in Brookfield. So... Um, I've been here for 13 years, and my church is, this church got involved with Black Lives Matter, um, and then actually the church took a vote to be publicly committed and involved in Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter. So, so when I moved here, I moved here from Seattle. I didn't know that much about Wauwatosa. Um, I didn't think too much about whether it had a good police department or what that meant. I'm a white person. I don't have a whole lot of reason to think about police. I, you know, it's just sort of like they're not going to be involved in my life. Yeah. So, you know, my husband was pulled over by Tosa police. He's Asian American. I've never been pulled over by Tosa police. Um, I worry about my kid, who's you know biracial, getting hassled by police. So far, it hasn't happened. Ooh, but, uh, were you there when the Andersons were uh, uh, first protested at Mayfair Mall? Um, I was. I was at the first one that started at the police department, and then we marched to the mall. And it was reported <coughs> that they uh, stormed the mall with SWAT gear. Um, they did. They. Um, I was actually standing outside the mall um, and saw them coming. Um, so first, we were at the we were at the police department, and uh, there were just a few of us protesting at first, and then. Um, so Captain Sharpie, Tim Sharpie, um, I was in my clergy collar, so I looked very official. And I was with um, Eric uh, Kepnick, who's a UCC minister, who's also got his clergy collar on, another white guy. Um, so Tim Sharpie is talking, Captain Tim Sharpie is talking to us, saying, you know, do you know who's in charge of this protest? Um, so I said I didn't know. So the, so the protesters were protesting, and the police were up on the roof, and they were you know, standing there watching us. And Officer Sharpie was, you know, you know, sort of monitoring the crowd. And um, I actually said to him, you know, after the, you know, people were chanting and more people were gathering, and um, I said, I went to him and I said, isn't there somebody from the police department who can speak to these people and offer them some information? And he said to me, well, you know, the Milwaukee police is investigating and, you know, until their report comes out, there's nothing that we can say. I said, but yeah, you could say that. But what he said to me was, um, he said, what, and get shouted down? And I said, well, um, I said, but even if, even if these good folks shout you down, at least they got a response. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And you know what? He did that. He actually did get, stand there and try to speak to the protesters. I don't know if it made people feel better or if it was just more frustrating, but he actually did it. Mm -hmm. Which I think says something yeah like there's some um willingness to represent but since then then the whole iron curtain came down and they didn't say anything yeah we uh we let let people in the church know you know distributed news coverage made sure that 
people here knew that we were engaged with Justice for Jay. We invited people to come to the balloon releases that happen on the 23rd. Um, I'll be going to the one that's happening this Friday. I got, I met the family. I got, yeah, they're, they're grieving, you know, people who are shocked and grieving and angry and wanted to know what, why on earth this cop shot their kid, mm. you know? Um, here they, you know, he's their son. He went to the park to sleep off. He knew he shouldn't be driving. Yeah, like, he did the right he thing. He did the right thing. You mentioned that you talked to the mayor of Wauwatosa. Yeah. Um, could you discuss that conversation at all? Or? Well, the first conversation, well, I talked with um, Kathy Eli um, back in the spring before Jay was shot. She cares about Wauwatosa. And Wauwatosa, um, wanting Wauwatosa to be a community, a community where racial diversity is embraced instead of, you know, tolerated or just ignored. Mm -hmm. She really cares about this and wants to make it happen. I think for her, I don't know if this is absolutely true, but the incident at Tosa Fest where everything got fenced off and um, that was the year after apparently there had been some crackdown on kids making a disturbance at Tosa Fest. But nice. apparently the police chief made the decision to do that fencing without consulting with the mayor. But but the mayor, you know, was in a position of having to scramble to keep up with this decision that had been made by the police department. Yeah. So, which was not, you know, she wasn't thrilled about that. It was like, wait a minute, you're doing what? You know, that was not what she would have chosen. Um, but then for her, um, for her to be concerned about this and wanting Wauwatosa to move in a positive direction, okay, and then here this young man is shot, Jay Anderson Jr. is shot. You went down to the DA office. Right. Uh, can you tell us about your experience down there that day? Yeah, the, um, uh, the fam Jay and Linda asked if some of the Toasted Together people would come. There's no way, having seen that video as close as we all were there, he was not reaching for a gun. That man was drunk. He couldn't even keep his head up. Mm -hmm. He wasn't lunging for a gun. He was falling over, like, passed out. So listening to the district attorney say that there have to be three things, three supports for an officer to use deadly force. One, intent to harm, so the person has to be intending to harm the officer. The second is uh, means, you know, a gun. And the third is a delivery system. Um, intent? Why would he have intent to kill Joseph Metza? Mm -hmm. You know, he's got no reason to kill him. And delivery system? He's totally impaired. There's no way he could have probably even held on to the gun, let alone shot somebody. I think that you know, maybe he's got one of those things, not three. Yeah, and then in terms so, of the... From seeing the video, it's yeah. so clear. Given that you were one of the few people who's at, who've actually seen um, not only the footage that they released, but also the, the clearer footage, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about, uh, like, do you find it suspicious that they would go around and remove the gun from the car before any other, like, walk, before any other backup besides Tosa PD arrived? It looked to me like they were um, following some kind of procedure. First we do X, then we do Y, then we do Z. Mm -hmm. But if part of that procedure is taking a picture of the gun, which they didn't do, they didn't follow their procedure. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't think of it as suspicious, but more um, poorly handled. And the stress is over. Jay is dead. And the officer not, did say that no pulse. Like right. right when he got there, That's he right. said no pulse. He, well, he's not breathing, and yeah. then he said no pulse. Yeah. So there's no threat here. So why would they not, you know, take a picture mm. of where that of the position of the gun or what it, what kind of gun it was or was it even loaded or you know I mean mm. really yeah they they lost you know huge there's huge gaps in this that are reprehensible, you mm. know, I mean, yeah. I mean, um, to say you can't charge somebody because the evidence isn't there 
where procedures weren't followed that allowed the evidence to be there, it's not, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they need a policies and practices review. I think they need to be accountable to the community in that, to say, yep, we're really going to dig in and look at what we look at what we do. Um, we're going to get, um, you know, training for our officers in, um, uh, you know, racial uh, bias training. I don't know what kind of training they have. Mm-hmm. Do they have any? Mm-hmm. You know, what kind of it is? Are the police academy supposed to provide that? I mean, is there something that they can do? And then look at those policies around if uh, an officer has killed someone, um, you know, does he get counseling, help, support? You know, I think they need to, I think they need to be, I would like to see them be really transparent about what happens and whether that was followed in the case of Joseph Mensa. Um, and um, what happened in terms of the did people leave him out to dry and not give him enough backup? I mean, I think all of that needs to be made public and that their general overall practices need to be reviewed and that their officers need more training. As Wauwatosa becomes more racially and culturally diverse, um, they need a police force that is equipped to treat all of us fairly. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody who comes through there. Is there anything that you want to say to Police Chief Barry Weber um, about... Um, uh, just as a citizen in Wauwatosa, uh, how how you feel about this situation, just his department, and I think I would say to him, um, think really seriously about whether it's time to retire, because if you can't handle uh, the slaying of an innocent black man with more transparency, with more compassion, um, with a greater sense of responsibility to the shattering of the community that this causes, it's time to step down. Time to get out. Mm-hmm. And is that just that simple kind of thing? I think so. I yeah. mean, I think they I think they've got a They've got some serious work to do, and if he's not up for it, he needs to turn it over to somebody else. Because otherwise this kind of thing might happen again right. or something different. Right. I I don't know if uh, um, Tim Sharpie would be better, uh, but I appreciated his willingness to actually um, take a risk and talk to the protesters. The Anderson family have had decent experiences with him, too. Yeah. So maybe it's time for him to step up and whatever to step down. I don't know if he'd be next in line. Mm. I don't have a clue how any of that works, but it feels to me like people, there needs to be a much more responsiveness. My, um, you know, the again, the things I've heard from other people about uh, Barry Weber is that he's very defensive anytime he's challenged. And of course you can't, you know, you've got a, an institution to, to uh, represent, but you know, that's not, that doesn't make a reputation with law enforcement where people feel safe. It makes a rep, reputation for law enforcement that people are afraid of. I don't think that's what you want. That's not what I want.